Howdy folks, Justin here, and we are going to go over my top 10 Heroes of Skyrim cards. This is not the top 10 most fun cards, or top 10 um, most interesting cards, or top 10 sleeper cards, or anything like that. These are just cards that I think are very powerful, that are guaranteed to see play, and that you should get a hold of uh, sooner rather than later. Um, for, uh, you know, if you're on a budget, or if you're limited in what you can get a hold of, because I think these are cards that are going to remain good. Um, barring one of them, it's probably going to get nerfed. <laughs> so without further ado, we're going to go to number 10, and that card is uh, the card we see the least of so far, uh, but I think um, an incredibly powerful card. The Thieves Guild Shadowfoot is a 3 magic, a 2-2 two, two in willpower. Uh, it says summon steal the top card of an opponent's deck and replace it with a counterfeit trinket. Counterfeit Trinket is a zero-cost spell. It says you lose one life and you draw a card. So, uh, you know, you need to keep in mind, uh, if you're, you know, dancing around breaking your opponent's runes, um, don't put them to 21 and then play this guy because they'll go to 20 and get a trigger their uh, prophecy. It'll be on their turn, but they'll still get a trigger it potentially. Um, but here's why this card's on my list. First of all, um, Farsight Nereid is a blue 3-3 three, three for 3 that lets you look at the top card of your opponent's deck. Ha, you know, it has, you know, fringe uses for avoiding prophecies. Uh, this does that uh, in, in a similar fashion, sort of. I mean, you don't get to know what's still on the top of their deck after the coin, uh, the counterfeit trinket coin thing. <laughs> but you do know that the next rune you break will not trigger a prophecy. Uh, additionally, it's a 3 magic a 2-2 two, two that draws a card, okay? And if it's good enough to be in your opponent's deck, it's probably good enough to uh, to run in yours, so uh, this card just does a lot for ver for really really low Magicka cost. I think it belongs in most decks that can play it. Quite frankly, I, I don't think we're nearly there with Saturation yet. But and there's definitely a lot of competition in the three dot spot in a lot of the decks that you're going to be you know consider running it in. But I, I've been really impressed with this card, and I highly suggest that uh, you give it a try. So number nine on our list is Deep Wood Trapper. This is a one three for one guard shackle creatures damaged by Deep Wood Trapper. Uh, Deep Wood Trapper belongs in aggressive decks, mid range decks, and control decks because it is that good. Uh, this card's ability to screw up what your opponent's trying to accomplish um, is unparalleled for a one drop. Uh, you know you're probably going to be able to trade uh, two for uh, you know trade into a two drop with this. Um, you might be able to get uh, some kind of two-for-one action, and no matter what happens, you're going to gain some serious tempo from this, unless it gets uh, executed. And if it gets executed, that's just a one magic spell for a one magic creature, and that's an alright trade to make. Uh, th I've been really impressed by this card as well. Uh, this card does great work protecting pilfer creatures, protecting uh, anything you want to keep alive, and uh, can help you with a more mid-rangey deck win a race. So I would highly recommend you craft some or pick some up because this card is going to be a staple in uh, a lot of things to come from. So my next number eight, we have a three-way three-way tie, um, which sounds a bit like I'm cheating, but it is Stronghold Patrol in red, Priest of the Eight in yellow. And sightless skulk in green. Uh, there are versions of these this this uh, cycle in blue and in purple, but they are a lot worse than these. Um, to be fair, the yellow one I think is a lot better than the red and the green one, and the red one I think is a lot better than the green one. But the green one's still playable, whereas I don't really think that the blue or purple ones are playable. Uh, but these cards are spectacular because. Uh, they're all reasonably costed bodies. You know, you're trading like a point of, of uh, health um, for a card, and drawn cards is the most powerful thing you can do in this game, frankly. Uh, it's incredibly easy to trigger them too, because having three creatures on the board is not a huge, you know, not a tall order. Um, and to be honest, I think the yellow one's good enough that you might see a resurgence in token decks uh, because of it. Uh, I, I've been really impressed with all three of these, the red one in orcs, the uh, yellow one in uh, tokens, and in some crusader builds that aren't real token oriented, and sightless skulk, uh, I haven't tried it yet, honestly, but, um, I mean, I've, I've tried it in arena where I was really impressed by it, but I think that it goes without saying that a 4-3 for 4 that draws a card is good, and, uh, 
yeah, uh, these are just incredibly powerful cards. They're common cards, so you're, you're not going to break the bank crafting them. And I think that you can get a lot of mileage out of any of them, and I highly recommend you check them all out. Uh, the next card we have is uh, an enabler card, I guess you might call it. And that is Woodland Lookout. It's a 3-4 for 3 when you summon a dragon, gain 4 health. This is the backbone of a lot of dragon stat strategies. It uh, having a you know multiples of a card like this can be a mirror breaker type thing you know if uh, you're both slogging each other out and suddenly you're able to drop two of these and a dragon on turn 15 or whatever and gain eight life that can be enough to turn the tide of a battle. Additionally, it's a three four for three, which is not difficult to pull off a two for one with against your opponent. Uh, it's a common card, so it's pretty easy to get a hold of a copy of this, and it is just really good. Uh, you know, obviously you have to be playing with dragons to get some value out of this, but the fact that there are four drop dragons in green, um, and in other colors too, but in green, the, uh, really, uh, the, the serpent, I think it's something, let me find it real quick, it just allows you to quickly pivot to, uh, Serpentine Stalker, quickly pivot, um, from reactive to proactive by dropping that on turn 3, this on turn 4, and then proceeding to start wiping out the board, because Serpent Heat Stalker, while not on the list, uh, would be in like a number 11 spot for me, honestly. Um, it's just, it enables a lot of good stuff, and it's really strong, so be sure to check that out. Alright, now coming in at number 6, we have the first of the two Shout cards that have made this. Uh, what's it called? Soul Tear, Soul Tap, and Soul Trap. Different things. Um, so Soul Tear is the purple shout. It's uh, two Magicka. At level one it says, so the first time you play it, it says, draw a creature from your discard pile. Uh, that's already good. It's an effect that we didn't have control over like this before. Um, playable. Uh, level two, draw a creature from your discard pile, give it plus two, plus two. And level three, draw a creature from your discard pile, give it plus five, plus five. This is a, this is a control mirror breaker card. This is an incredibly powerful card. Um, you know, playing this in any deck that runs purple is something you should consider every time you're, uh, you know, sleeving up a new deck. Um, one of the reasons this is on my list is because of the fact that it is the first time we've been able to have you know direct control over what we're bringing back without having to rely on a Falkreath Defiler swinging into something. You know, and having a four magic of three three that needs to trade favorably into something is not uh, not the easiest thing to do. Uh, you know, it's definitely possible. But Soul Tear allows you such such incredible options. I mean, like imagine bringing back, for instance, a Eclipse Baroness with this. That's incredible value. Even if you just bring back. A, uh, a small charge creature in a warrior deck, for instance, you're getting great value. Um, the possibilities are endless. This is combos with creatures. Uh, and the fact that in multiples it makes them bigger is even more impressive. I have yet to be in a situation where I wasn't excited to get Soul Tear when I got Soul Tear. So. Um, yeah, this is a card that's going to be around for a while. And I think, honestly, this is not a card we see a ton of yet, but it's a card that we'll see more of as days go by. The meta gets more refined. I think this card just gets better and better. So, uh, definitely one to be on the lookout for. And again, just a nice common card, which is great. So, this is the last of these ties, I, I swear. But at number five, we have a tie between two giant 12-cost dragons. Um, and that is Parthenax and Alduin. Uh, so, the reason I, I split these is, even though I think, so, Alduin's obviously powerful, but requires a very specific deck to run. Like, you need to be running ramp dragons, or just an insanely slow control deck with a ton of dragons in it to make use of Alduin. Uh, and Parthenax is easy to overlook, so I wanted to, I wanted to package them together, because I think you're going to run them in the same deck most of the time. Uh, Parthenax is, like Soltar, the kind of card that breaks mirrors, breaks stalemates, because... Three random shouts that are cost that cost zero is crazy. I mean, imagine getting a single soul terror back from this. You are looking at an amazing amount of value, uh, and really all of them are pretty useful. Only the red one would be sort of disappointing, but like you have to be able. I mean, like you're going to be able to find a way to use these. And the fact that you can get multiples of the same shout or copies of shouts you're already running copies of is crazy good. Parthenax is an amazingly powerful card. Being a nine nine is relevant too because it's great. This is the kind of card that's good in Scout Mirror or against Scout in general, and this thing trades into Swamp Leviathans, and survives, so keep that in mind. 
Uh, I, I Parthenex is the card that's really uh, one of the cards that's impressed me the most. And then Alduin, I mean, like, what is there to say about Alduin? It's a 20 Magicka 12-12 that costs 2 less for each dragon in your discard pile, summon, destroy all the creatures, which is pretty good. But you can play this on an empty board if you don't think your opponent can deal with it, and it'll just start churning dragons out of your discard pile. And that is amazing, because... Uh, I mean, we have two guys on this page alone, Odaving and Parthenax. You bring those back, those are incredible, incredibly powerful summon effects. Um, even bringing back a Ramp Dragon or a uh, Wind Shear Dragon, the guy that gives minus two, minus two. These are all amazing things. And just having the bodies on the board is fantastic. So Alduin and Parthenax coming together at number six, I'm sorry, at number five, as just a pair of incredibly powerful dragons. Not going to be, these aren't ubiquitous cards, they're going to be everywhere. Not even in every deck that could conceivably play them. But Parthenax in particular is just monstrously powerful. I mean, it's rare to say something like this, but I think I don't think I'm being too ridiculous when I say Parthenax is a 12 Magic a 9-9 that can be a huge tempo swing for you, too. Um, all right, so coming in at number four, I debated whether or not I was going to put this card on the list because... Uh, how do I spell this? Apparently it's not how I thought it was spelled. Um... Oh, whoops. Praetorian Commander. Um, I f believe this card will get nerfed. Um, it's not... Well, here's the, here's the, here's why it's on the list. It's a really powerful, really, really powerful effect, right? Compare this to Divine Fervor. Divine Favor. Uh, this card just beats the hell out of, out of that card. Uh, it's already better just by being a 6 magic, a 3-3 three, three that you can actually kill people with. But giving all creatures in your deck plus 2, plus 2, that's crazy. I mean, running tokens with Divine uh, Fervor was already one of the, like, you know, least exciting things you could do with it. Because tokens ha very rarely have any rules text, and rules text is where the fun happens, right? So, Praetorian Commander is obviously the basis of several really strong decks right now. We've definitely seen a, um, a backlash to that already. You know, I mean, Ramp, Dragon Ramp Scout is uh, a, has a good matchup against all those decks, as do... It's not as good a matchup. I think that... I, I, I don't recommend playing Blinding Fast Aggro against that deck because of the number of prophecies it runs and the fact that you can get really unlucky. It's not even really unlucky because they're running like 35 prophecies. Um, you can just get stomped by two bad prophecies in a row from that deck. But Praetorian Commander is just really good. Uh, yeah. That's really all. I mean, even if you don't combine it with a, you know, a deck full of prophecy cards, making, just like a lot of other cards in this, this is a sort of card that breaks mirrors, right? It's a card that uh, if you're still running an old school pre-Heroes of Skyrim deck and your opponent's running the same deck but three of these, like, they will win the game because this card increases the power level of every other card they will play. Um, there's not much else to say about that. Uh, I would encourage you to open these and not craft them. <laughs> Although, if you do craft them, I'm sure you're going to get your soul shards back if and when it's nerfed. Which, to me, I mean, it remains to be seen whether it will happen. Uh, I'm guessing it does, though. Also, uh, worth mentioning insane power level in Arena, which I suspect was the reason that Divine Fervor was nerfed in the first place, was its impact on Arena. Alright, so now coming in at number three, not a card we see a ton of yet, but an incredibly powerful card, Call of Valor. Um, there's not a lot to say about this, except for that it's, in my opinion, clearly the most powerful shout, although the purple one is really good. And uh, there, there are spots where they're all good. But Call of Valor is just crazy powerful. Um, I mean, this is one... Along, and the reason that this and the purple one are at the top of my list for the shouts is because you play this on curve, your very first shout at level 1, and it summons a 3-3. Three, three, that's good. 3-3 three, three for 3 is totally playable. There are games that you win because you beat down with the Dawnstar healer. This gives you that opportunity in ghostly spirit form. Uh, and, of course, at level 2 when it summons 2, and at level 3 when it summons an entire lane full. I mean, that's bonkers strong. Uh, I think this card is amazingly powerful. This card is great for people who are just starting out in the game because it's a common and it uh, slots into every yellow deck that you're going to be wanting to build until you can afford to build Control Mage. <laughs> and, and honestly, you 
you might run this in Control Mage. I just have been super impressed by Call of Valor. It's really straightforward and it's really good. So now coming in at number two, we have a uh, a card I like a lot. If I could spell. That card is Thief of Dreams. It's a five magic of five five epic. It says, see a vision of two of your opponent's cards. Guess which was one is in their hand if you're right. Draw a copy of it. Uh, so, you know, the little menu comes up with two cards on it. You guess the right one, and it's in your opponent's hand. You draw a card. That's a 5-5 five, five for 5 that draws a card in your opponent's hand. This gives you information about what they do and do not have in hand. This oftentimes gives you that card. I mean, a copy of it. Uh, this is just an Im Im amazingly powerful card. I mean, I, there's n nothing else to say about this. This is the best 5-drop in the game. This is... I, it's a skill-testing card, and so, like, this gets better the more subtle the meta is and the better you are as a player and the more insightful you are to, as to what your opponent's doing. But there's so much that you can go right with this card when you play this card. Uh, in, a 5-5 five, five for 5 that drew a card on its own would be fine. I think this might actually be better because of the information it gives you. Uh, it's just it's just awesome. This is an incredibly powerful card. I highly recommend that you get to hold some of these and uh, you know witness that power firsthand. Alright, so now coming in... Oh, hold on. I think we have a... Uh, I think we have a special guest. What's that? You're not impressed with my list. You're not. Okay, and, and you say you want to do a special talk about about a card that that I haven't talked about? Okay, well, here we go, guys. Here's a special guest who's going to talk about one of the Hello, cards. I am Swims at night, and I am Argonian. I come to you to tell you about the most powerful card in the set, Swims at night, based on myself and my own life. I'm a 2-2 two, two for 4, but do not be mistaken, because when you summon me, you put a random zero-cost card into your hand. After you play a zero cost card, swims at night, that's me, gains plus one, plus one. I am very disappointed at the lack of Argonian representation on this list. I told Justin if he did not allow me to talk about true most powerful card, number zero, also note incredible pun at being number zero and making zero cost cards. I told Justin if he did not put me on his list, I would eat his cat. And Celine, she looks delicious. I really appreciate Justin giving me opportunity to show most glorious card in set. Thank you very much. I will see you all on the ladder. That was crazy, guys. I did not expect that at all. So, uh... I don't know what we're gonna... I better hide Celine. Uh, we'll, we'll finish off this list, and then I'll make sure she's okay. I wonder. Where, I don't know where Sandra is, either. I, I'm, I should check for her as well. Ah, I'm a little, I'm a little scared, I mean... Did you see that guy's teeth and, and his zero cost spells? I think he was gonna cast healing hands on me. And that's that's not his job. <laughs> All right, so here's my number one card. This is a card that goes in every blue deck that you build from now on. And I typed it the same way I mispronounce it all the time. It is Ancano. Ancano is an 8 magic of 5-5. Five, five. You hit the breakthrough, summon, deal 5 damage, do whatever you want to. And your actions have breakthrough. This is blue Tazcad. Uh, Tazcad isn't in every deck that can run him, but he's in most. Ancano is the same way. Ancano is just a really, 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 really strong card that uh, there's almost no downside to running. Um, this is Reach, this is a finisher, this is a way to combo silly things with Ice Storms and stuff like that. And it's just a, you know, it's a unique legendary, so it's not going to make a huge difference in every match. But it's the kind of card that you should run in almost every every blue deck that you can. It does everything you would want it to do, and uh, it, you know, clears the way for your uh, <laughs> turn uh, 8, 9, 10 Supreme Atromancer. And uh, it's available in one of the 500 gold pre-constructed decks, so it's really easy to get a hold of. And honestly, that fact kind of bumped it up to number one for me, because this is a card that you can get a hold of pretty easily. You know, 500 gold is a few days worth of daily quests and a few wins on a ladder, and you can have yourself an Encanto and an entire deck full of other playable cards, too. So that is my top 10, um, you know, top 10 powerful cards from... Heroes of Skyrim. In the coming weeks, I'll put together a list of cards I think that are being a little overlooked, and cards that I'm going to pursue myself. And uh, in the meantime, I hope the uh, expansion is treating you all really well, and I will see you all on the ladder. Bye-bye.